filmed this one time when I like actually was reminded this debate existed, but I sounded like I was dying. Like my voice sounded atrocious. And I sat there and I was like, you know what? I could just refilm this and say the same things and my voice won't sound so bad. So uh, we're gonna talk about the Seiya and Usagi versus Mamoru and Usagi thing. Cause I have an opinion on this that like either is the silent majority or is genuinely different from most people's opinions on this situation and on this relationship, so to say it. I'm gonna start off by saying, I didn't see anything wrong with Seiya and Usagi's relationship. I saw it as nothing more than a platonic friendship. I thought that they were just like besties and that's what was going on. It didn't really occur to me that this could be inappropriate or cheating in any way. I mean, there were little moments, but at the end of the day, I always thought that Usagi remained loyal to Mamoru and didn't really do anything out of bounds, at least in my opinion. I think the most lovey thing that was done was when Seiya took her to like that, that dance club type thing. And like when she was, afraid he hugged her and he held her, which honestly, I think any of my male friends would have done for me in that circumstance. And like, I don't know how to explain it. People look at this situation and a lot of the times they think, say a bad, say a knows she has a boyfriend and he's not respecting her relationship with Mamoru. He has no respect for Mamoru. Other people look at it and say, Usagi is crossing so many lines. Like she's not telling Seiya that, no, I can't do this. I have a boyfriend. She's allowing Seiya to be like led on. And honestly, I don't think we're taking into account quite a few things about this situation. First of all, with Seiya not respecting Mamoru and Usagi's relationship, um, let's look at what it is from Seiya's perspective. So we all as a collective audience know that Mamoru and Usagi have a future together. They have a future daughter together. They have Chibiusa. We know they're the king and queen of Crystal Tokyo. We know that they end up together. This is all their fate. We know this. Seiya doesn't. Seiya has absolutely no idea about any of this and Usagi can't tell Seiya about all of this because that would then require telling Seiya that she's also Sailor Moon. And that's kind of something she's not supposed to do, but she doesn't know Seiya's Sailor Starfighter. So maybe if in the beginning we had known this was Sailor Starfighter, she could have told Seiya, but she couldn't tell Seiya. Like as far as she's concerned, Seiya's just Seiya. Seiya's a normal human. Seiya's not um, an alien. So Seiya not knowing any of this, any, any of this like destiny stuff, looks at it like this. There's this girl, this high school girl, dating a college student who has gone to another country, gone to Harvard in America, there in Tokyo, Japan. He's not answering her phone calls. He's not writing her back. She clearly misses him a lot. Say is the only person she really ends up kind of confiding in that Mamoru's not communicating with her. And if that was happening to my friend, if my friend's boyfriend went all the way across the like continents, even to just another state, and like wasn't speaking to her, I would assume the worst as well. I would say that's a pretty terrible boyfriend. I'd be telling my friend whether I'm interested in you romantically or not, break up with this person, whether it's your boyfriend or your girlfriend, break up with them, they're not good for you. I remember one scene in particular that a lot of people criticize the character Seiya for doing. Seiya at one point, sees a picture of Mamoru and Usagi that Usagi keeps in her room. It's a very, very cute picture. I think she cries on it at one point. I think she's got her arm locked in his. I think it's in a bunny frame. And he says, you can't keep a girl waiting forever and turns it face down. And I mean, I think that really speaks to what Seiya is seeing happen. Mamoru is like stringing Usagi along and Nobody knows that Mamoru's dead. I hope I didn't just spoil anything for anyone. Mamoru's canonically dead at this point. Mamoru didn't make it to America. The, the plane was kidnapped by Sailor Galaxia and Mamoru was killed. And Mamoru's last word was, I believe, Usako. Like he called out to Usagi. He clearly still loves her, but Usa Seiya doesn't know that. Usagi doesn't know why he's not writing her back, but she trusts him and she loves him. But God, this is really terrible sounding and all of Usagi's friends are like overreacting to her friendship with Seiya. And I think a big part of that is because they're jealous that Seiya's interested in Usagi, who already has a boyfriend and not interested in any of them. And Usagi's also the only one that's not starstruck, which I think plays a part in like 
why Saya was so interested in her because she's not like a crazed fan that wants to date an idol. She's a person that enjoys Saya's company. So now let's talk a little bit about like Saya and Usagi's actual relationship and like, is it emotional cheating? I would not consider it that. My boyfriend actually watched the end of Stars with me and had a very different take. And I wanna talk a little bit about our two different takes and why I think we have different takes. I find it very consistent with women that they have the same take I do on this situation. Not every woman, but like consistently, it's the girls I speak to about this that have the take that I have. I look at Saya and Usagi's relationship and I see two close friends. Does Saya have romantic feelings for Usagi? Yes. Does Usagi really know that? No, I think that's very obvious. Usagi's a bit of a dunce. She's a bit oblivious to that kind of stuff. And you know, she's, she's characterized that way. Like we all know this. I have that tendency as well to be very, very oblivious to when someone has some kind of interest in me. And she's just, just like, oh, this is my friend. This is someone that I care about. This is someone I'm friends with. This is someone I cherish and I, I, I love platonically. I saw it as a very, very platonic relationship. Saya knows Usagi has a boyfriend. Usagi's not hiding that she's dating Mamoru. You know, a lot of the experiences that Saya has with Usagi where they're going and hanging out and doing fun things together. Like I would do that stuff with a friend of mine that was male and I wouldn't see anything particularly wrong with it. I think a lot of it is the way that the show framed their relationship and the fact that we know that Saya has feelings for Usagi that makes us look at this relationship differently. Because I think that if that factor was taken away, we would probably not look at it as emotional cheating of any kind or any kind of disloyalty on Usagi's part. Now my boyfriend had a very, very different opinion on it. He watched the last part of Stars with me on New Year's Eve. And he was like, no, that would make me super uncomfortable. Like she's doing things with Saya that she would be doing with mom or that you'd be doing with a boyfriend. And I think that it really came down to the fact that we had very different takes on it. And like all the guys that I've interacted with or I've asked about this situation, and it's not like I speak to everyone about this, but it tends to consistently be men that are like, yeah, that was emotional cheating. That if that was my girlfriend, I would not like that. And like at the end of the day, I think a lot of it really has to do with intent. And this is just a disagreement. At the end of the day, we're putting like our comfort level and our boundaries onto these characters because not everybody holds the same boundaries that we do. And again, intention, intention, intention. Usagi clearly was not intending to hide her boyfriend from Saya. Usagi wasn't like trying to do that at all. Usagi was very, very like open with Saya that I have a boyfriend, I have Mamoru, um, he's over in America, he's coming back for me because she trusts him. And I think that's what really, really showed me that like, this wasn't Usagi trying to cheat. This was just Usagi being oblivious to the fact that Saya had feelings for her and looking at this as a platonic friendship because honestly, I would have looked at it in that situation the exact same way. Someone would have had to literally spoon feed me that this person I was speaking with wanted to be in a relationship with me. I also think that my boyfriend and other guys looked at it differently because I mean, when you look at it from that perspective, Saya was trying to kind of get Usagi away from Mamoru, but not because Saya didn't respect Mamoru. Well, Saya didn't respect Mamoru, but not because like Saya hated Mamoru for no reason. As far as Saya is concerned, Mamoru's pretty neglectful. Mamoru's pretty awful, pretty emotionally abusive. Like tell me ignoring your girlfriend would not be, you know, emotionally difficult. Tell me that that doesn't feel neglectful and abusive. That sounds awful. That sounds like a toxic relationship. Again, I would want someone in my life in that situation out of that relationship as well. I, I think part of it came from a place of care and you know, say I just happened to also have feelings for Usagi. I mean, I don't think I would respect Mamoru if I didn't know the circumstances as well. Like I would probably be like, God, he's so abusive. He's not writing back. I think that actually the other in, the other inner senshi would have had a very different reaction if they had realized Mamoru wasn't communicating with her. I think they would have probably been a little bit more like Saya been like, why isn't he talking to her? Like, this isn't okay. Like, you know, my boyfriend and other guys tend to look at it as, you know, she has a boyfriend. Why are you doing this? And again, I, I think that it comes down a lot to like comfort level. Like, what are you comfortable with your significant other doing with people of the opposite gender? Like my boyfriend could hang all over friends he, girls he's friends with and I wouldn't care as long as he's like not making out with them or kissing them or anything like that. I just did not look at that relationship for a second and think that 
in Usagi's eyes, it was anything less than platonic. I didn't think there was emotional cheating happening. I also was able to look at things through Seiya's eyes and be like, this looked pretty bad on Mamoru's part. And I mean, I, at the beginning of the season was like, why isn't Mamoru riding her back? Like no wonder Seiya doesn't like Mamoru. Mamoru's literally not speaking to her. And I think that that was very helpful for me because like I, I did not quite know that Mamoru was dead yet. I didn't know Mamoru was dead until like halfway through when I Googled it. Cause I was like, what's going on here? Um, Cause I like to spoil things for myself. But yeah, I'm really interested to see how this will get covered in Cosmos and like if it'll be any different or and if people will react any differently to this. I feel like, like if there's any kind of romantic tension between the two, uh, from the trailer especially, I think that there's gonna be some romantic tension and I think people are gonna say Usagi's emotionally cheating. I think that this is gonna be a discussion forever because again, I really think that we're putting our personal experiences in the ring. And you know what, I think that's great. I think that that's part of why people love Sailor Moon. We can relate to it so much and we put our personal opinions and our personal experiences in here and we talk about it from that perspective. Like, I don't think that's a problem. I just think, you know, it's worth hearing another opinion. It's worth looking at it from another point of view. And I hope this kind of provided that for anyone. All right, that's all I wanted to say. Stay safe, stay smart, work hard, bye.